got this uh, Blue Easy Reader Thermostat by Rod Rogers. It's easy to use, easy to read, five year warranty, uh, six inch display, single stage, multi stage, or heat pump, uh, thermostat set point limits, dual fuel logic, hardwired or battery powered with power stealing assist. And what's nice about this thermostat is, uh, is you can use it for dual fuel and you don't need the uh, fossil fuel kit. So uh, Fritz Rochester has been asking me about a thermostat. Um, his thermostat has, has not been working correctly for a while. So I told him about the Blue Easy Reader thermostat because it's so simple to hook up. Uh, so actually, he doesn't know he's getting this. I'm going to mail this thermostat to him. And uh, he's going to be overly excited when he sees this thermostat. But uh, I know he'll show you how to put it on the wall. Hey, Dallas, man. Thank you so very, very much, brother. Man, it... it the this means the world to me, man, and I can't thank you enough for sending me this uh, White Rogers Emerson Climate Technologies Blue Easy Reader Thermostat here, man. And and you know we've been talking for a while now about my, my dual fuel thermostat, and uh, I can't believe you actually sent this to me. It made my day finding this out on the front porch, man, and, and absolutely, yes, sir, I'm beyond excited. And I can't wait to get this thing up on the wall. So basically that's what I'm getting ready to do right now, brother. So uh, I reckon I'm going to call you later after I get this thing up. So uh, I just want to say thank you so very much. And, and uh, I'm proud to call you my friend, brother. And it, it's been a pleasure to get to know you over these last four years. And I thank the world of you, Dallas. All right, guys. Uh, basically what we're going to do is uh, get this uh, Blue Easy Reader on the wall. And uh, first things first, uh, Thermostats 101. Before you ever go to install a thermostat, guys, you need to ensure that your appliance is off at the switch or in some locations, they actually have a plug. You need to make sure the power is off or you're gonna be in for a world of hurt. All right, guys, let's kick her off now. All right, guys, we're ready to rock. Let's go. Okay, guys, I reckon we're ready to get started here. We made sure we ensured that we had our furnace turned to the off position. Whenever you go to hardwire in a new thermostat, you want to ensure your appliance is in the off position. I'm telling you that it'll save you a world of hurt and heartache and pain. But uh, anyway, guys, we've actually got our sub base mounted on here, our blue easy reader sub base from White Rogers Emerson Climate Technologies. And guys, I'm gonna have to say I'm, I'm really loving these stats here, guys. Um, basically, one of the first things I loved about it was when I pulled my old dual fuel thermostat off, the uh, sub base uh, matched my uh, uh, footprint uh, perfectly. And uh, I think that's gonna eliminate having to carry around a lot of those beauty plates, well, I call them goof plates. And uh, I, I think I'm actually gonna start packing these on the truck, guys. They're easy to configure and easy to hardwire. And basically what we're gonna demonstrate here for you today is like I said, I run a dual fuel system here, which is a, uh, a heat pump, uh, primary and uh, uh, gas fired furnace secondary. So basically, guys, I'm going to uh, show you how to uh, actually hardwire it in. Um, basically, guys, too, another uh, quick pointer, uh, the sub base itself. I actually mounted into paneling. I actually hit a stud on this one, and this is paneling into drywall. All right, guys, so I got away with just utilizing drywall screws. Point being here, guys, if you're just going to go straight into drywall, please, I'm begging you, please utilize the anchor kit that comes with it or the anchor anchors that you uh, prefer. I mean, uh, you don't want to get a call back from a customer saying, well, uh, I want to change my batteries, and now I'm holding my entire thermostat in my hand, sub-base and all, and I got a wire dangling in the back of it when all it would have took was five extra minutes to actually mount that thing and do it right. But, uh, all right, no more preaching. Uh, another thing I like to utilize, guys, I like to utilize this thumb gum here. Uh, it stays pliable, and the reason I use this is actually, guys, there's like, a, you know, there's going to be a hole behind your sub-base, and uh, you want to ensure that you cover that hole and you don't want residual air coming back behind your thermostat that could potentially, uh, you know, screw it up and uh, throw it off a lot. So basically I utilize the thumb gum. I know a lot of people that actually utilize uh, uh, silicone. Um, I'm not a real big fan of that because, you know, God forbid you might have to change out uh, or pull you a new wire. And before you can even do that, you're going to have to be cutting out all that silicone. This, like I said, this stuff stay, stays pliable. But uh, anyway, guys, too, uh, for aesthetics, we always want to make these thermostats make sure that they're level. I mean, if something's out of skew, it's going to look like you did an unprofessional job and like you didn't even give a crap about it. But uh, anyway, guys, back in the day, we actually had to ensure they were uh, uh, level uh, for the simple fact of the mercury in them. But today we do it for aesthetics to make everything look professional. So let's see if uh, <laughs> let's see if I got this puppy on there right. All right, guys, looks like we're dead on. 
dead on. All right, guys, what we're actually going to do here now is uh, we're actually going to hardwire this thing in, if y'all would like to see. And it, like I said, it looks like it's going to be a piece of cake. So basically, I'm going to grab my handy-dandy uh, thermostat screwdriver, and we're going to get started right here with the green wire, which is the G terminal here. And this is what uh, initiates our fan here. So let's go ahead and get, see if we can get that puppy in there good and taut. All right. And guys, you want to ensure these things are tight, but you don't want to go nuts with them. You don't want to break this terminal here. But uh, you want to make sure they're tight, and you will get a feel for this after a while. And once I do that, I actually pull on the wire to ensure that it's in there. Make sure that it's in there. All right, guys, now we're actually going to take our yellow wire here, and we're going to the Y terminal. Not the Y2 terminal, but the Y terminal. And this uh, yellow wire is actually representing our, our heat pump, uh, our heating mode and our cooling mode. Basically, guys, this is what uh, energizes your contactor, but in my case, it's energizing my sure switch. So let's go ahead and get that puppy in there and get that good and tight. Don't want to strip them. All right, give them a gentle tug here. There you go. It ain't going nowhere. All right, guys. Okay, now we're going to move to the white wire. Okay, this, the yellow wire is primary heating. The white wire is secondary heating, emergency heat, if you will. Okay, guys, and we're, we're looking at this WE terminal. So we're, this is going to be our auxiliary heating. So let's go ahead and get it on down into the WE. Make sure we get her in there real good. Back this out just a hair. Okay. Like I said, you want to make sure they're tight, but don't go nuts with it. Okay, a little pull on it. She's in there good. All right, guys, now we're going to take the orange wire. And this is what uh, gets energized. It's basically your reversing valve. Train an American Standard, call it an SOV, a switchover valve. And basically, this is what gets energized in the cooling mode. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our reversing valve deal in there in our O and B. Got that turkey down in there good. Okay. Make sure she's good and taut, and she is. Okay, right here where we've got this jumper, this red jumper here, we've got it jumped out between R and C. I'm going to go ahead and take it over to RH, and it really doesn't matter. I always have a little trouble with uh, trying to get the two wires in with that jumper, but let's loosen this up just a hair. Okay, we're down in there. Make sure the jumper's in there as well. We can get that turkey tightened up. Okay, that's good and tight. Okay, guys, we've got a blue wire here. This is going to be our common wire. This is actually what's going to keep that uh, the blue display lit up on this thing. All right, guys. Okay, that's why I say you always pull on these to make sure that they're in there. Let's back this puppy back out again. Yeah, if you go through this, then you don't you don't have to worry about it later. I guess there's always going to be a difficult one. Never fails. All right, there she goes. now okay make sure she ain't going nowhere she's in there taut reds in there taut sov uh, reversing valves in there taut our uh, our auxiliary heat our secondary heats in there taut our primary heats in there taut and our fans in there taut so we're good to go let's push the thumb gum back down real good and uh all right guys we're ready to rock let me go down there turn the power back on and we're gonna fire it all right guys up. let's hit the switch here and go uh Go put our brand new hardwired dual fuel thermostat up on the wall. All right, guys, let's go hot. Okay, guys, we're ready to get started here. Um, I actually went down to the basement, 
turned our gas fired furnace, our secondary heat, our emergency heat back to the on position. So we now have power flowing to our sub base here. Uh, we have 24 volts uh, flowing to it. And basically guys, this would actually be if you were coming out on a troubleshooting call to actually troubleshoot the thermostat, this would actually be where you're going to actually get your multimeter out and uh, start testing the terminals here to determine what's wrong with it. But uh, anyway guys, I can't reiterate it or let me reiterate again by stating that whenever you install a brand new thermostat, Please, please make sure the power is off to your appliance, whether that be uh, switching a switch to the off position, and in some states they actually have it to where they're plugged in by pulling the plug or by turning the, uh, the circuit breaker off to the off position. Guys, if you don't do that, you're opening yourself up to a world of heartache and pain. Uh, at the least, you're going to uh, fry a fuse or you're going to smoke a transformer or even worse. And guys, it only takes a second to turn the power off. Okay, guys, that being said, uh, we're actually ready to uh, actually install our brand new blue Easy Reader uh, thermostat here that we have configured to uh, dual fuel operation. And before I actually ever install my, my thermostat to a hot sub base, I always ensure that my thermostat is in the off position in the off position. And guys, what we're actually going to do, I'm going to try something new. I've actually got a camera set up out back and I'm actually going to try to uh, through the magic of editing, I hope I can do this. I'm actually going to show myself, uh, show the unit, uh, our primary heat, our heat pump, uh, firing up when I hit the, uh, the the button here for heat. But uh, let's go ahead and get this thing on the wall. I actually do have it uh, wired with a common wire here, so our backlight display should fire up, and I've got it configured to where I keep my backlight display on at all times. How easy is that, guys? All right, bam, we should have our light. Okay, guys, we're good to go. All right, now. Right here is our heat pump uh, uh, button here, and uh, basically we're going to hit that. If you wanted to just uh, uh, bypass your heat, uh, your heat pump, your primary heat, you merely hold in on this button for approximately five seconds. It'll say auxiliary. It'll get highlighted, and then your gas-fired heat or what other uh, what other secondary heat you're using will uh, be uh, initialized. But uh, anyway, guys, let's go ahead and fire up our heat here. We should hear the click, and as you can see, we have the auxiliary over the top. Should hear a click. And there it is, there's our heat pump uh, energized. And within a few seconds, you'll hear another click from our fan relay. Like, there it is, right there. All right, guys, now we have fan. All right, we're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna let it run just for a, a second or two, and then we'll actually uh, turn it to the off position. And hopefully I can capture that as well out there. But uh, anyway, guys, I might try to actually uh, uh, show you all the auxiliary heat as well. I'll set my tripod up downstairs, and we'll actually watch the furnace fire off as well too, if, you, if you'd like. Uh, um, like I said, I'm new to this. And through the magic of editing, maybe uh, maybe I can actually get it to work. But if not, you've actually seen this portion of it. But uh, anyway, like I said, you'll just merely hold in this button for like five seconds. It overrides the heat pump, and it'll actually initialize the uh, the gas fired heater or what other or what other secondary appliance you're actually using. All right, guys, let's go ahead and turn it to the off position. You'll hear the click of the uh, heat pump knocking out. There it goes, and within a minute or so, you'll hear the uh, fan relay uh, knock out. It'll uh, uh, Turn off the circulatory fan. And there it goes. Okay, guys, that's a piece of cake. Guys, I am digging this uh, this Emerson Climate Technologies White Rogers thermostat here, guys. And it was so easy to configure it to dual fuel. Um, I'm actually going to, if y'all would like to see, I'm actually going to shoot a video on... Uh, 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 configuring it to dual fuel in a in non-programmable uh, uh, application and I'll actually if y'all would like to see as well I'll do it in a programmable application as well but uh, alright guys let me get my tripod set up downstairs and we'll actually fire this thing off in heat. Now we're ready to check out the secondary heat here on our dual fuel thermostat. Basically what we're going to do is override our heat pump our primary source of heat and uh, basically we're going to be testing our emergency heat our auxiliary heat on our gas fired furnace here and guys that's a piece of cake we're just merely going to press in on the heat button right here and we're going to hold it in for approximately about five seconds or so and uh, actually you'll see the auxiliary heat being highlighted once we see it highlighted we're going to hear a click the click's going to indicate that our inducer motor is ramping up we're actually going to go through our order of operations our uh, our pressure switch is going to prove it's actually going to test to make sure that none of our safeties are open then it's going to actually allow the igniter to come on. Once the igniter comes on, it's going to allow the gas valve to open. Once the gas valve gets a bank of uh, flame across, our flame sensor is going to prove that we have flame. Okay, guys, it's all just a matter of safeties here. 
But uh, anyway, guys, let's uh, go ahead and get started. We're going to depress it. Should have auxiliary heat. Click. There's our inducer. All right, guys, now it's going through its order of operations. And basically, this might be a, a couple of minute video here, guys. Um, it's gonna. It's once uh, once it uh, the the flame. Uh, once we get uh, flame in there from the gas valve opening, it's gonna actually allow the heat exchanger uh, to the chamber itself to get hot or heat up before the blower kicks on. That way, you don't get an initial rush of cold air. So uh, I'm hope you'll bear with me. I'm sure this is this portion of the video is probably gonna be like three minute, three or four minutes long here. But anyway, guys, like I was saying, man, I'm really enjoying this stat. It's so easy. I'm going to make a, 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 probably a couple of short videos out of this. I appreciate y'all watching my epic video here. But I'm actually probably going to make one about uh, hard wiring it, maybe like a five or six minute video, and then configuring it, uh, probably a five or six minute video. And then I'm actually going to, uh, to uh, do one on uh, non-programmable dual fuel and programmable dual fuel. So I'm hoping y'all will come back. Okay, guys, we got blower motor. We got blower motor. All right, guys, we'll let that run just for a second or two. And what I'm actually going to do, we're going to simulate like it's already met temperature. And uh, basically, guys, you're going to hear, I don't know how to describe this, but you, you're going to hear like a poof, okay? And basically what that's going to be is the uh, gas valve shutting itself down and uh, flames being extinguished. And then uh, seconds later, the inducer motor will kick off. But the, the gas valve will go out first. All right, guys, let's hit it the off position. Now, it's probably going to take a minute for the... Uh, the actual blower motor to kick out. What it's going to do is uh, cool off the heat exchanger. Y'all heard that click there. That was the inducer being knocked out. But uh, please bear with me, guys. Like I said, it's probably going to be a couple minutes or a minute or so before the, before the blower kicks out. This always seems like the longest way. But uh, like I said, guys, I can't thank y'all enough for stopping by and visiting with me and uh, watching my videos and, and, you know, all the positive feedback I get from each and every one of y'all. I appreciate it so very much. And uh, Dallas, I wanted to say thank you so much, brother. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you sending this to me. And, and actually, guys, we're going to give Dallas a call as soon as this blower motor kicks out. kicking out at any moment there she goes all right guys thank you so much for bearing with me all right guys let's keep, let's give uh, Dallas a call all right y'all thanks so much let's give Dallas a call <laughs> gotta thank my brother What's up, Dell? Hey, how's it going, Fred? <laughs> it's going great, brother. It's going great, man. I, I just wanted to holler at you real quick and, and tell you thank you so very much for actually shipping me out this uh, brand new Emerson Climate Technologies White Rogers Blue Easy Reader Thermostat. Man, I love it. Yeah, no problem at all. Man, uh, it was a it was a piece of cake to configure it to dual fuel. It was a kin uh, piece of cake to actually hardwire it to dual fuel, man. It was. Yeah. A lot easier than the one that uh, we were talking about earlier, the, the old one I had on the wall. Yeah, yeah, no, no fault of your kid. Oh, absolutely not, man. And, you know, that last one I told you, it was a nightmare to configure, man. It, it takes like 25, 30 minutes to configure that one. This one here I probably had done in, in less than 10 minutes. So. Yeah, you can do it in your sleep. Oh, yes, sir. And uh, on this one, Dallas, I actually went ahead and I programmed it non-programmable with the dual fuel application. But uh, I... 
I was actually thinking about shooting some video later because it, it looked like a piece of cake. I was actually going to shoot some video on uh, programmed uh, to oh, yeah. the, so maybe we'll shoot some yeah. video on that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. How'd your mom like it? Oh, mom loves it, man. Uh, actually, right before I called you, I actually had her up here and uh, actually had her uh, try it out. And uh, it, it's got the great big, uh, huge uh, six-inch display, and the icons actually uh, light up really bright and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like going to the drive-in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure is. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey. Oh, he got you got two paws up on that, brother. He said two paws up to Dallas. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh, my God. That, uh, I'm glad it worked out for you. Oh, yeah, man. Peace cake. Peace cake. Yeah, because it, 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 you know, it's really gotten a lot easier to wire up the heat pumps now because it's, you know, it's built an algorithm now. No. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, it's got that, that, that logic built into it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very unique and figure. So, yeah, uh, actually, uh, Another thing I loved about it, Dallas, uh, I got it mounted to the wall here, and uh, actually uh, I got to mount into paneling. But uh, anyway, uh, the the I, I didn't have a need for a goof plate, man. It covered it up perfectly. That's what's nice about that thermostat because yeah, I call it beauty plate. But if you don't have a beauty plate and you put that thing up, and then the customer looks at that wall and they see that where the old thermostat was, they're not going to want the thermostat. Oh, my God, dude, they ain't going to want to pull out no touch-up paint, and it makes it look like garbage, dude. Yeah, that's the size of the reader. Oh, absolutely. Now I've got the Emerson uh, Emerson uh, thermostat here, and I've got the Emerson Sure Switch out there on the unit. You're, you're, you're set up. <laughs> Next levelness. Next levelness. Your professor loves you. <laughs> All right, man. Well, brother, I was just... I was just wanting to call you real quick and, and tell you thank you so much for, for taking care of me. Uh, I know we've been talking about my dual fuel thermostat for a while, and, and I think she was getting ready to go. So I got this. I, I, I was just thrilled to death to see this sitting on the, on the front porch out there, man. No, 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 no problem. I'm glad it worked out for you. Okay, brother. Well, let me, uh, let me get to uploading my YouTube video here, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll call you back here in about an hour or two if that's cool. Okay. Okay, buddy. Okay, man. I'll talk to you, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay. All right, man. Bye. All right, bye.